Thank you. So uh, uh, we, we, we have a link with, uh, with GCHQ. We went on a, an, an MSC, uh, certified MSC in, uh, in, in cyber security. And our, our, our biggest challenge is the scale up in, in, in students. We, we now have more distant students across the world uh, than we have face to face. In fact, we're looking at a multiplier of probably three or four times as many distant students. But the thing we want to make sure is that the quality of education that our distant students get is the same as our face-to-face -face, uh, students. So we can't obviously be in a lab with our distant students. So how do we make sure that that environment is, is, is consistent in, in, in some sort of way? So we've pushed ourselves forward and started to look at uh, a virtualised security operation centre. Most of our graduates go into the SOCs with inside Edinburgh and within Glasgow. I think outside London, Glasgow and Edinburgh have probably the highest percentage of uh, SOCs uh, across uh, the UK. And the reason SOCs are here is that they get access to educated, highly skilled, technical people who will stay in, in, in those cities. So the attractiveness of a, a good graduate pool and obviously of, of programs which are creating graduates who can hit the ground running is, is really why uh, industry is, is attracted to, 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 to those cities. So we've set up partnerships uh, around this and uh, I'll show you some of the work that we've actually done. So for us what we really want to do is to be able to create something that allows us to share so why is it that I have to buy N-case licenses and they sit do nothing after five o'clock because they're locked in a lab where some other student across the world could be using uh, that, that, that license? So we would like to see an infrastructure, a training infrastructure, really built around the cloud that allows industry to share material, uh, also allows uh, an evaluation infrastructure, uh, evaluation infrastructure. We're quite shocked how few companies actually have a simulated environment that they can play with, they can do their, their cyber training. We had one example where the only way they could do the penetration testing properly was to destroy the DevOps environment and then on Monday rebuild the whole infrastructure again. So more and more companies need to have a place where you can play and you can actually assess the security of it. Along with that, you need a place to really, for your DevOps to be able to create the, the environment to test the applications securely uh, and, and make, make sure they're working. So we think more and more there should be an environment where everyone can share, share licenses uh, and, and so on. So the basic infrastructure we created, well, it's quite simple really when you look at most networks. They really are just uh, split up into the main uh, infrastructure. Uh, around your DMZ, your, your, your private networks, and then on into the, into the public, uh, into public networks. So we try to create an infrastructure that mirrors a real life environment, and we have things like firewalls and, and NAT. So it's in there that really students can break things, and we can make sure that when they're using the systems, then we know they work uh, because every student gets the same environment and we can easily uh, reset it from then. So this is what we've built and what we've tried to do is to create strategic partnerships with the key companies that we see uh, our graduates, uh, 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 the software that they're, they're using. If you look at many SOCs, uh, you'll actually find it's typically built around ArcSight RSA, uh, Splunk and IBM Curida. Uh, they may be running other, other software, but more and more companies are focusing in of two of those types of, uh, of, of products. And really more and more that's what security is about. It's about aggregating all the data from across the network and bringing it to a central point and then using human skills to be able to understand uh, well, if, if you're, if you're under, under threat. So this is the environment that we get uh, our, our students uh, set up with and we've increasingly been using intrusion detection systems to be able to uh, set up uh, analysis. So in terms of the infrastructure, it, it may not look like much, but uh, we went to Azure, we went to AWS, 
and we just can't do some of the things that we want to do inside those public cloud uh, infrastructures. For one, we wanted to run full malware, and there's no way that you can run proper malware with inside the, uh, a public cloud. For that, we wanted to run full penetration testing with red versus blue and adversarial uh, t type roles. So we went ahead and we built the whole infrastructure. Our, our IT unit obviously have other objectives and what they're actually creating. So we went ahead as, as a school and as a group to be able to build our infrastructure. So that's it there. We have racks within the Merkiston campus uh, in, in Edinburgh, and that really supports really our whole education infrastructure around our, our, our MSc. It was built around vSphere 5.5. We just didn't find anything better than, than that just now. And we've got about 2,500 virtual machines uh, running it on it now, uh, and the, 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 the modules right range from network security uh, to, to malware analysis and, and incident response. So we've built it up over the years, but we know that we need to scale. So we can't really continue to run that infrastructure and start to be training within the US and, and across the world. So we've been looking at other types of infrastructure to, to, to move forward. And we think that more and more uh, security is moving towards this fusion of roles. So at one time you had a, a forensics analyst and they were there to investigate after the event. There is during the event and then also before the event. So increasingly the three roles actually merge together. And the security analyst is really responsible for both before the incident, during it and then after it. So the tools that are created are really fusing together all the different logs that you would get at each of the different uh, stages. And when you think about it, you have data at rest, you have it in motion, and you have it in process. So more and more, we're bringing together all those logs, all that information, into a single place to be able to understand uh, our, our, our threats that we get. When it comes to machine-type threats, then we have lots of tools to be able to cope with that. But more and more, it's human threats that we're dealing with, and every single human threat is, is different. So we need analysts there to be able to pinpoint when things are, 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 are happening. And the problem that we've got is that every, the minute we write a syllabus, it's completely changed in next year. In fact, it looks old-fashioned within two or three years. So when you think about it, our graduates probably need to know all of those things. They need to understand Apache web servers, and network security, uh, protocols, databases, uh, and so on. And it becomes quite a difficult art to be able to understand all of that and, and have some sense of the complexity of, uh, of a large uh, infrastructure. But industry wants the graduates to hit the ground running. They will give them possibly three months training or so, and they have to pick up all, all these skills. So it's not an easy environment for, for uh, graduates to go into. And more and more, what we're seeing is the integration of logs and alerts from internal to the network into a package like Splunk, or external uh, threats coming through uh, BBC channels. I was thought it was quite surprising when I went into a security operation centre. I thought that's quite nice, they've got TV screens up there so that they can maybe watch the news. And what it was, was that uh, the analysts could actually watch the running news as it came in. So they could see a hack happening in one part of the world, uh, and then they could actually see the sense, the presence of it on, on their, their own network. So threat analysis isn't just about what's happening in your own network. More and more companies are taking threat analysis information from across the world and bringing it into the, the security operations uh, centre. So we see a rise really in, in packages such as Splunk, RSA, uh, Curidar uh, and so on. And it can be the differentiator between uh, one of our graduates getting a, a job in a bank and, and, and not. So just that that sign that they have, they have at least been exposed to Splunk and understand how it works is, is, is really enough to get them uh, the interview and possibly even the job. So the, so the infrastructure, 
that we have. It's fairly, fairly simple, uh, our, our, our basic infrastructure. But we try to make sure it's got a mixture of all the different types of, of tools that, that they would actually use. So we have a main firewall, and with a main firewall, we obviously either uh, isolate them from the internet. If they're running a malware or a penetration testing uh, uh, module, then we want them completely isolated because we don't really want them to be nessing uh, onto, the, onto the BBC site. Uh, but sometimes we want them to ping. So even the basic principle of I can ping 8.8.8.8, but I can't ping google.com, it might surprise you. But that isn't a skill that comes natural when you're testing. Uh, you'd be amazed the I can't connect to, 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 to in the browser to Google. Well, ping yourself, ping the gateway, ping the, the main gateway, uh, and, and then ping uh, an IP address and so on. So we try to build up skills, and we want students to, to break things, and we want things not to work so that we can make an, an intervention. So the students build their own infrastructure, they set up their own IP addresses, and then we get them to do red versus blue. So in the lab, and within two hours, we can get each group, so we get them to work in groups because we don't want the normal computing environment where they're just sitting, typing in a keyboard, and we want them to be working together as a group and then to work as a bigger lab together. So we're very lucky, within a few weeks, they're, they're setting up the network with a certain IP ad address range, and then they're all linking to a larger network, and then we can do red versus blue. So you can get much more interaction uh, happening in them. So this is an example of our, our Splunk infrastructure, uh, where you can see we have a forwarder here, we're on Tripwire, uh, and we have a, an IDS running on the Ubuntu machine there, and we get them to set up. Increasingly, we want them to use the command line, and we want them to avoid any graphical tools uh, at all. So we find that if we teach our, our graduates three things, it's to learn the network protocols well, learn the command line, uh, and, and to, to learn uh, operating systems. So you see here, uh, we, have, we use PFSense, so everything we use is an appliance, uh, and increasingly we're using appliances rather than, than actually hardware boxes. Uh, so this is the, the lab, uh, it's, it's on YouTube if you want to see it, but within this lab we take them through setting up the network from scratch, being given an IP address range and a setup, and going ahead setting up Splunk forwarders and then setting up the Splunk server to actually receive the alerts coming in. Once they set that up, then uh, other groups can come into their network and they should be able to see the, the presence of it. And it makes it much more interesting once you start to get that interaction between, between the, 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 student, the student groups. I don't think it's possible to play this now. And then what we do is that obviously that's, that's, that's part of, of, of our, our assessment, is obviously the technical setup. But more and more we're seeing data analytics, uh, the use of Python and Pandas, uh, in, in setting up and analysing. So increasingly we are pushing our students to be learning to code, to be able to analyse big data, to look for things and, 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 and wash out traces. So we set up a virtual environment with a test environment and with the Buttercup Games Splunk uh, infrastructure. So this is interesting because SIEM allows you to be able to mine for uh, uh, marketing information, but also for security information. So a SIEM package is perfect for an organization and it keeps so many departments happy in, in gathering information. So we have our, our, our Splunk setup and then a running Splunk server on the internet that allows students to be able to mine in and, and find things. But along with this, We've been looking at ways to stimulate and not to constrain learning. So in education, we, we learn at, at an average amount. We don't want to lose weaker students, but we never really test the really smart students to allow them to be able to do whatever they want. So increasingly, we've been using capture the flag activities uh, to be able to push students forward. Uh, so this was uh, an example. We had the BBC come along, uh, and these were the hackers 
uh, there. They came up from London all the way up to Edinburgh. And uh, the, uh, we set up a, a British broadband site. You can imagine what site it was meant to be. Uh, and they, they went ahead and they found the vulnerabilities uh, with inside the infrastructure. We've turned that round now that it now runs with inside uh, a capture the flag uh, type environment. So it has real threats such as Heartbleed uh, and some of the SSL vulnerabilities uh, built into it, each with different levels of uh, abstraction. We ran a cyber security inside camp over the summertime. It was one of the best educational environments I think I've ever uh, been, been part of. A three-day camp, you think by the end of it, students would be really bored and uh, but at the end of it they were all friends and they'd all bond bonded together. They were from different universities, they had different backgrounds and so on. And again we, we set up uh, a cap to the flag with the British broadband and by nine o'clock in the evening uh, we had to we had to actually drag them off the computers. They were so interested and they just wanted to, to continue uh, on from there. Okay so cap to the flag is really uh, uh, a key focus in what we're, look, what we're focusing on uh, and really we think it's a, a great way to stimulate uh, students. So we also ran one at a big data conference that we had in, in Edinburgh uh, and we built that around RSA security analytics. So a lot of the caps of the flags are just basic ciphers and so on but we want it to be doing real things like looking at real network packets and finding things. So this is our RSA Secure Analytics. RSA have given us their software for free and we're building a SOC around uh, RSA uh, from that. And you can see the interaction uh, and enjoyment uh, of, uh, of, of the teams uh, involved. So each one is useful and, and has been mapped to something that industry would probably find useful. It's up to the team whether they go for the low-lying fruit, they go for the low point values and get lots of them, or sometimes they go for the high ones and all of a sudden a team will go to the top. But it's obviously a risk. But that's a strategy that they actually take. This shows you the RSA one, the, the kind of things that they're actually mining for, and it really provides for almost unconstrained learning. So just now we run in case because that's what the police want. Uh, companies want NCASE too, we also have open source tools, but if you want a job in the police, you've got to have done NCASE somewhere. So we float a license, we have XP uh, with malware uh, and a whole range of things. And we've managed to get 30 big IP F5 firewalls because F5 have given them, given them us uh, with, with the help of uh, Hutchinson Networks. Okay, so everything we've got is scripted. We did look at Python and we did look at, at lots of other things, but we ended up with, uh, with uh, PowerShell. So all our back-end stuff is all scripted. We have nice front ends, but everything below is actually good old standard scripting. So we can set up a lab uh, for 30 groups within, within minutes, and that's once it's created, we can then reset it uh, just before the lab uh, and set it. So it gives us much more control of what we, of what we need to, uh, to use. And we've never even come near the CPU utilization. We've never really come near using up memory. One thing we, we did learn is that you're better to buy a big box with lots of memory rather than lots of little boxes uh, with little bits of memory. So buy the best box that you can with the most memory if you're running VMware. Uh, and it's the best investment that you can actually make. We did one time think we could buy lots of servers and that was a really good thing, but you're actually better to buy something that is really robust. So we've really built up our, our infrastructure and we use it in a whole lot of modules now. And it allows students to leave the lab, go home and actually repeat the lab. So that's, that's what you're focusing on. You don't want students to not come into class anymore. That's a really depressing thought that's, that you would end up going to a, a class and there's no students because the lectures are online, the labs are online. So why do they have to come into the, into the, the lecture then? What we've moved on to now is interesting work with, uh, with SDN. So we know there's a performance issue. If we want to be running this with thousands of students running in, in many different environments, then we know that we need to move towards SDN as a solution. We want everything to be an appliance and we want to create a virtual bank in a second uh, and, and in a short time and, and get it set up. 
So now we've been looking at, at integrating all the infrastructure that we, are, that we have and working with uh, Hutchinson Networks uh, from Edinburgh uh, or with their Fabrics platform. So everything we want to do, we can actually create and we have data centres in Edinburgh and London which allows uh, the, the, the provision uh, to be, to be localised. So again, that's the architecture. We quite like that architecture. It's nice and simple. Uh, and that's the infrastructure that we get. We can either create labs where they can, they can do red versus blue or we can isolate them themselves. And it gives us uh, an opportunity to set the lab up however we want. So I was going to give a, a demo of it, but I can't uh, uh, from here. So uh, you can, on, on YouTube, you should be able to find a, a quick demo of, of, of what we've set up. But in the Fabrics infrastructure, the, the, the teacher can actually set up the classrooms, can actually set the environment up, and then uh, create it as a template, and then roll that out uh, whenever uh, it's, it's required. Uh, so that was a video, but uh, in here, uh, and actually show the, the, the basic infrastructure for it. Okay, so that's, that's what we've set up and we're, we're quite close to, uh, to, to rolling it out. We're, we're, we're really keen uh, to get uh, industry involvement. We've been really surprised the number of companies who have given us uh, free software and we think that uh, it really sets our, our graduates apart. Okay, thank you. Just a general question about the educational value of what you're doing. Um, one of the things that's noticeable to me is that there aren't many courses on generic network management. It seems that everything's moved towards just security, not the rest of the FCAP stack. Are you offering uh, a generic network management course, or are you concentrating just on security at the expense of everything else? No, 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 no. Our, our core course is built on on networking. So, so we have a deep analysis of, of network protocol. So we, we use Wireshark and Snort to be able to understand it. So, so this is the Splunk integration is to, more towards the end of the course. Everything we do, virtually at every level, we're teaching them core networking skills because that is that is the main thing that industry is actually required. Even just the understanding of how a firewall works. Uh, why does my traffic go that way and doesn't go that way? But then when I allow it to go, it, it, it is allowed to come back. So. So, so everything we do is really core. We have a network security module, which again is our core infrastructure. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's a, we don't differentiate between networking students that much and security students. We think there's a fusion of the two. Uh, the graduates who leave from the networking degree will typically get jobs in security, and the security graduates will get jobs in networking companies. Hutchinson Networks don't differentiate between between the two uh, there. So I think there's a general fusion uh, of, of the roles increasingly. Hi, Robin Crory from North Sky Broadband. One of your slides there indicated that your third phase was respond and report. And I'm, I'm rather curious as to whom you think you might be reporting. The National Specialist Law Enforcement Centre closed seven or eight years ago and most force forensic analysis departments have got machines that have, the time to examine it is over a year. So it's not strictly speaking relevant, but it's like there's a bit missing off the end, which is obviously there's commercial interests that need to be satisfied. But there's also, if you like, a, a phase that says that this information needs to be fed back for investigation and enforcement. So I'm curious. Yeah, we... we the, the reporting is typically the reporting of an incident. So uh, increasingly, we see uh, graduates being recruited for their, their business skills and not necessarily just the technical ones because eventually they do need to report back, back to the company. Uh, from a, a law enforcement point of view, uh, there is a, a, a massive skills gap about moving the police from investigating a single machine as to investigating the whole of RBS uh, infrastructure. It's a different skill set and the funding isn't quite there for them. But I think 
Police Scotland, uh, as an example, are, are actually quite interested in, in learning much more about logs and how they investigate uh, logs. So it's, 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 a long, it's, it's a long route uh, to, to, that we need to go forward because these days the evidence that you would find on, on a corporate machine is probably limited because most of what someone might do is actually in the cloud uh, and within logs on a remote, remote server. They're listening to network packets. <coughs> within five years, 95% of all traffic will be tunneled. Uh, so ISPs won't be able to examine anything that goes on with inside the, the traffic. Uh, so it's a, it's a changing landscape. So basically, there's a huge lacuna there that, that, that actually the end bit is missing. It's, uh, you know, that's a fact of life, but I just wondered if there were any moves that I wasn't aware of that, that, that might fill that lacuna. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Neil McRae from BT. Um, a, a great presentation. It's great to see um, a university looking at this. I'm slightly concerned about your, the comment you made about a student knowing how a certain package worked being important. And actually, that's one of the things where I would challenge you. We have a lot of graduates turn up whose knowledge of fundamental protocols fa falls far short of the mark that I think it should do. And, and I just wonder what you're doing or how you're ensuring that people do understand protocols really well. Because I'll take 20 people um, who can do protocol level work as opposed to 5,000 that can run a package. So, so our core is around networking and around protocol. So everything we do in the classroom is all about understanding the, the different levels of, of the stack. We go into great detail of IP, TCP, uh, HTTP, all the protocols, FTP. You can watch the videos online. So we differentiate that to, to, as that's the core understanding and we still have exams. Uh, you cannot do this stuff if you don't understand the different levels of the stack and what you're actually looking for. So our core education is all about that. I think if you look at many of the security operation centres in Edinburgh, you'll actually find that there are graduates because when they're asked questions about protocols, they, they, they get them uh, straight away. So, so our, our, our core is always around, around fundamentals. Otherwise, we become, become trainers. Uh, and we provide Cisco certification, uh, we're not interested in, in that at all. Neither are we. Me again, Sterling University. So just to reinforce, there's, I think there's a, there's a more systematic issue here that you're facing UK-wide, um, which is in some sense the networking and the systems community more general, we're in, uh, victims of our own success. So the ACM has only 10 hours of networking instruction in its four-year program of education in computer science. And when we speak to people who are um, not working at our level, whether in computer science or outside, it's really difficult for us to convince them that it's worth devoting time and energy to these types of issues because they see that they hit send on one side for an email and it gets to its destination, right? So. Um, it is something I think everybody should be talking a little bit more widely is the importance of maintaining a strong, resilient, reliable, secure system and infrastructure in general, even though it still works. Okay. Uh, William Waits, University of Edinburgh and Hubs. Um, so looking at some of the, the, the maps and diagrams of your, of your test setup that you have there, it looks... Like a lot like it's sort of, uh, you know, what you might call an enterprise network, a small version of this. Uh, now, uh, there are, of course, many different kinds of networks. I mean, that, that's not representative at all of an ISP network, an access network, a transit network, these sorts of things. Are you very much focused on enterprise networks, or are you in, have you given any yeah. thought to the other kinds of networks that are there? Yeah, yeah. so th this, is, this is a typical network that we would use in network, network security and understanding uh, network infrastructures. We have another uh, infrastructure that looks at GNS. We run a full GNS3 infrastructure with, with devices looking at, at VPNs uh, and so on. So we do integrate a, a, a deeper understanding of, uh, of, of other types of networks and, and other, other modules. This environment, we think, is a, is a good uh, 
a good explainer for the different types of firewalling that, that you would get and really the, the debugging skills that they need to integrate. Okay, last question. Uh, hi, Paul Tweedy, BBC. Um, just wondering if there was any, uh, uh, the scope there seems to be very focused around kind of desktop hardware and desktop machines. Um, any scope to expanding that to um, mob, kind of mobile devices, tablets, etc.? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we run a range. We, we have an Android uh, simulator in there. We can, th these are all mainly server type uh, machines there. So for us, once we create a, a template, we can, we can clone it uh, quite easy. So it's, it's not too difficult. So we run Metasploit uh, on an Android device. We will run a, a compromise on a device and run it with inside our cloud infrastructure and then use tools to be able to analyze it. Okay, thank you Okay, very thank much. you.